Ann, you're on the air. Ann, thanks yeah. for calling. Yeah. You're on with Kimon and I. Okay. Um, yeah, drug prices. Yeah. Okay. I'm a liver transplant, 31 years mm -hmm. out. Had a brain aneurysm in between. Mm. And, okay, drug prices. I found um, 15 to a um, 2015, they were 28,581.42 for the year. Mm -hmm. That's how much all my meds were. And then uh, one of my drugstores um, quit carrying one of my um, seizure medications because it became too expensive. So I shopped around to find how much <laughs> it cost. And every you have to shop everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the highest one I found. Okay, uh, Shopco. There's seven point five milligrams that are five forty six oh nine a month. Those are the seven point fives, and on the fifteens, um, she goes one thousand six hundred and sixty up. Uh, I'll just call it 7000 <laughs> <laughs> And then another one, let's see. Rose Hours was 470 And that's uh, one drug. This is one drug, and mm -hmm. I take 10. <laughs> so you take 10 drugs. Uh, the, the in summation is drug prices are too high. Uh, and I know you know this, but we're just going to just keep making sure everyone knows this. There is nothing underlying those high prices except for pharmaceutical company greed. The yeah, public the public pays to develop the drugs, NIH and university grants. The public pays to grant the patents and protect the patents. And then the public pays the highest prices in the world. The pharmaceutical industries have us coming, going in any, every other which way. Uh, and uh, I just want to say, Anne, that... Your story is unfortunately all too common around this country, but fortunately, people are starting to rebel against this. They're, 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 the big lie that pharmaceutical companies tell that the high prices are the cost of innovation is starting to crumble. It's starting to crumble. We saw a bill that Al Franken put in uh, that actually uh, does goes a decent way to addressing this. It has— 16 co-sponsors in the House, four co-sponsors in the, in the I'm sorry, 16 in the Senate, four in the House. And um, it allows importation from Canada and then expands out to other OECD countries. It allows Medicare to negotiate drug prices. It forces the pharmaceutical industry to disclose how much money they spend on research and development versus marketing. Uh, here's the, the teaser of that. They don't spend money on research and development. They spend it on marketing. Uh, and so... Everyone, raise your voice, call your members, 202-225-3121, and demand that they get on Al Franken and Jan Schakowsky's bill to lower drug prices. Uh, drug prices are too high, but they don't have to be, and we can fight back. Uh, Michael in Indiana, you're on the line. Yes, hello. Um, Michael from uh, Northwest Indiana. Northwest uh, Indiana. Uh, uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm a union laborer out here working. I'm on my lunch break right now. Solidarity. Program. I listened to Dr. King's speech earlier about Vietnam on the uh, earlier program, Mark Thompson. And uh, I had heard about it before, and I just, just want to say that out here, you know, as a union worker, I know that Dr. King was assassinated trying to help, you know, people organize and have an economic justice. And I have to explain it over and over again to my fellow workers who are white and black, Latino, and they, you know, they're, I, I just feel people are starting to wake up, like they're starting to. It may take a little more long, you know, it may take a little while longer, but we're going to wake up, and I just hope it's not too late. Me too. Well, uh, thank you for the call. Uh, and I just have to say, because you say he's calling from Indiana, that's one of the 19 states that's actually trying to um, uh, outlaw protests. And in fact, I believe in Indiana, they were trying to give police the right to remove protesters from the street by any means necessary. So if Martin Luther King was marching in Indiana today, he might get ran over uh, legally. I uh, just wanted uh, to point that out. But he was, being beyond Vietnam's speech uh, delivered 50 years ago, 
uh, was an anti-war speech against a war where blacks, whites, and Latinos who may not ever lived in the same neighborhood all died together in the same mud. And why were they there? It was about um, protesting the capitalistic economy is what King took on this. Uh, and so we need to point that out because those re issues are still relevant today. He said the three evils were racism, militarism, um, and, uh, and uh, racism, militarism, and poverty. How could I forget poverty? And these, these things are still here today. Yeah, and that's exactly what Michael's talking about and what this— the fight for economic justice cannot be split off from the fight for—they use different terminologies for it all the time, but it's civil rights. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you listen to much of the corporate media's kind of telling of the Martin Luther King story, it really leaves off that fight for working people. It leaves off the fact that he calls into question, uh, you know, how much— uh, democracy can deliver if it is just left to the billionaires on Wall Street to decide how much people are worth, that you need a social democratic system where the people have more control over the system, over not just, you know, uh, who's elected, mm -hmm. but also fundamental economics. Like, we can say we deserve a $15 minimum wage, that that is a country that works a country that doesn't work, and we find ourselves, unfortunately, too further and further in this uh, in this muck, mm -hmm. is one where Wall Street, where billionaires, where a select few have inherited the power and the money, and they get to call the tune all the time. Exactly. And we, ha we have a situation where we have a monument built to the legacy of Dr. King. It was sponsored by corporations. That's why you have certain quotes that he said not on that monument, certain words that were on that monument were removed. Uh, and, I mean, we at radio. We, we're here in D.C. It was a, uh, D.C. was the last um, uh, pen in this, um, the largest uh, utility um, monopoly in the country. It was Exelon, Exelon uh, Nuclear Power Company. They offered us um, thousands of dollars if we were to promote that when it was up for debate here in, in, in D.C. And we, we, we had to say no. We had to say no to that. How many media outlets could, could say that? How many would do that today? That's the type of integrity we, we have. And that's why I need your callers and your, uh, your listeners here to support and join the opposition and go to weactradio.com and click that button. Do something now. And we're having our big fundraiser, our fifth anniversary, hosted by Seton Smith, uh, uh, up and coming rising star in our Anacostia Oh, no, studios. his star is Rose, man. <laughs> this dude is a star. He has a sitcom. Well, he, Texas is out. He's going to be here with us on tax day. And uh, um, so we're, we're going to go to a break. We're going to come back uh, and take all of your callers, uh, all of the callers uh, about the, the board has just really lit up about uh, MLK, Beyond Vietnam, economic justice. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, uh, the unofficial tagline of We Act Radio when we launched it five years ago was, how hard can it be? Uh, <laughs> turns out it's super hard. Um, but, you know, the official tagline is do something. Do something. Because that is what we both, you know, uh, we have a history, I think, about over a decade now mm -hmm. of organizing for justice in Washington, D.C. Uh, and, you know, the, the thing that we really see completely the same is, is, is that aspect, that you have to do something uh, and, you know, maybe that something is a little crazy, like when we were like, yeah, let's have a radio station. That's right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, five years later, we've launched an enormous number of voices into the media ecosystem. Without funding. Without funding. We've funded our, we, we've made a business that functions. It works. Uh, but we do want to grow. We mm -hmm. want to bring more voices into the system. Uh, and that's why at five years as a successful business, uh, we want to take it to the next step, grow uh, and bring more voices into the system. That's why we have our, our fundraiser at weactradio.com. Uh, you can join the opposition party there. I'm Alex Austin filling in for Tom Hartman on the Tom Hartman program, and we'll be right back with more of your You're calls. You're listening to the Tom Hartman program. Call 202-808-9925. You're listening to the Tom Hartman program. I'm in studio with Kamone Freeman. We're taking your calls right after this.